Lily is the newest mythic brawler coming to Brawl Stars, and she is the second brawler in the Enchanted Forest trio along with Cordelius. She was once a human obsessed with witchcraft, which ultimately led her to the Enchanted Woods after chasing around a firefly. Some sort of carnivorous plant magically turned her into half firefly, half plant, half human. That's right. Four out of three people struggle with fractions, and it appears like she's going to stay like this forever. Keep in mind that just like Spike, she's a plant and has no voice lines. Lily's main attack is Thorn in the Side. Lily uses her thorns to jab enemies at very close distances. Even though the range is very small, it does pierce through targets, so it has the potential to deal lots of damage. Interestingly enough, she only has one ammo bar very similar to B or Carl, so she can only hold one shot at a time. Other than that, it's just a very basic close range attack. Lily's super is Flourish. Her attack is really basic, but her super makes it look so much fun. She fires a projectile that sort of looks like a fruit or a vegetable, and if she hits an enemy with it, she will instantly teleport behind them. Not only this, but she also slashes the enemy as she passes through them. The super cannot travel through walls, but if she hits an enemy with a projectile, she will teleport behind them no matter what is between them. I think this super is one of the best abilities out of all the assassins, because she obviously obviously can't take damage while teleporting, so she won't be getting hit unless she's already right next to the enemy. Lily's first gadget is Vanish. Activating this gadget will instantly put Lily into the Shadow Realm. She can't bring anyone with her, and she can only stay there for three seconds, but if Cordelius takes anyone into the Shadow Realm, she can use her gadget to join the fight for a short time. This makes me think that whoever the third brawler in her trio will also be able to enter the Shadow Realm, which honestly sounds pretty interesting and cool. Now you might be wondering why would you want to use this gadget? gadget without taking somebody to the Shadow Realm, it's so that she can sneak around undetected. It's kind of like Leon's invisibility, except she's guaranteed to come up on the enemy spot after five seconds. Lily's second gadget is Repot. This gadget turns her next super into a throwable projectile that can go over walls. Additionally, Lily will teleport wherever it lands, and it doesn't even hit to have to hit a target like her regular super. That being said, this projectile can deal damage, and it even has a small radius so it can deal damage to multiple enemies. Lily's first star power is Spiky. This star power will add 1,200 damage to the very next attack that Lily fought fires after using her super to teleport. Even though Lily's attack can pierce through several targets, the extra damage will only be dealt to the first target that she hits, and the rest of the targets will take normal damage. Also, she will get a damage boost if she uses her second gadget to teleport, so they actually do synergize pretty well together. Lily's second star power is Vigilance. With this star power equipped, Lily's movement speed is increased by 15% as long as there is an enemy within her supercharge circle. Now, this star power does stack with other abilities that increase speed, like the speed gear or Max's super, but it does not stack with more enemies. So either you have the 15% speed boost or not, no matter how many enemies are actually close to her inner circle. Like I mention, Lily's the third brawler in the game behind Buzz and Cordelius that has a trait that gives her a dotted circle around her that charges her super every second that an enemy is inside of it. But she also has another unique trait that no other brawler has. Her footsteps are invisible. Normally you can actually see brawler's footsteps behind them for several seconds before they eventually fade away. So you can actually see if a brawler has just entered a bush or something. But Lily leaves no footprints behind, which might not make much of a difference, but it's an especially good trait for an assassin. Now it's time to compare Lily with the rest of the brawlers in the Olympic tests. Starting with her worst test, the attack range test, and then moving our way up to her best. Lily's attack only reaches two and two third tiles across, so you basically have to be right next to an enemy in order to hit them. She ties with Doug, Jackie, and Edgar for 76th place, which is a tie for dead last. Next is the area test, and Lily can only break four skulls with her main attack, but she is able to break 18 skulls with her super. Her second gadget also gives her super a radius of nine tiles. In total, she breaks 31 skulls, and that's only enough to tie with Sandy for 64th place. Next, we have the one second DPS test. Since Lily can only hold one ammo at a time, her burst damage honestly isn't the best. None of her gadgets still extra damage, and she only has time to land her super and a boosted attack from her star power within one second. She deals 5,600 damage in that one second and ties with Charlie for 63rd place, but there's quite a few brawlers that she can't one-shot in that one second. Next is the swarm test. Lily can take out three bots at once with her main attack, and then she uses her super to teleport to a fourth bot and take it out at the same time. 
After a fourth super, she's able to take out the last three bots in a row with her attack, and she defeats the swarm in 7.2 seconds that puts her in 53rd place, suggesting she's not the best for taking out multiple enemies at once. Next we have the auto aim test. Lily can't even reach further than three tiles with her attack, but even at her max range, her attack will definitely land even if it's auto aimed, so that's pretty nice. She deals 2,400 damage from three tiles away, so she ties with Mandy for 53rd place. Next is the supercharge test, and it's hard to tell exactly how quickly Lily can charge her super, just because it's impossible for her to get close to an enemy and hit them with her attack without also charging her super from her trait. Either way, she charges her super, it takes 2.5 seconds to recharge it, so she ties with Kit, Ruffs, and B for 47th place. Next is the survival test. Lily could survive longer by going into the Shadow Realm, but brawlers aren't allowed to avoid shots in this test, so she doesn't really have anything to help her except for her HP. She does, however, have 8,400 total health, which is quite a bit, and she's able to survive for 22.1 seconds, which ties her with Carl for 43rd place. Now, in the remaining test, Lily is better than half of the brawlers in the game, and we're starting with the three attack kill test. Lily's star power makes her first attack deal 3,600 damage, and then the next two only deal 2,400 damage. So in total, she deals 8,400 damage, which is enough to assassinate 60 one brawlers in the game. This also ties her with Cordelius, Larry and Laurie, and BB for 39th place. Next is the super damage test. Now whether Lily's super is shot normally or thrown with her gadget, it deals 2000 damage to anything that it hits, so this ties her with Surge for 38th place. Next is the assassin test. Lily's able to use two supers within three seconds, which boosts two of her main attacks as well. In the assassin test, she has three seconds to deal as much damage as possible, and she can only fire one main attack in between her two supers before those three seconds are up. She deals 13,600 damage, and that ties her with Kit for 37th place. And honestly, that's not super great for an assassin. However, she does have a lot more HP than most assassins. Next is the super range test. Now Lily's normal super has a range of nine tiles, but with her gadget activated, her super decreases in distance down to eight and a half tiles, but the radius is about one and a half tiles, so that makes a total of 10 tiles, which is enough to put her in 32nd place. Next, we have the boss test. Lily's single ammo doesn't give her the most burst damage, but she still has a fast reload speed, so so she does good damage over time pretty consistently. She just keeps using her main attack and super while getting some extra damage from her star power until the boss eventually dies. It takes her 27.7 seconds to do this. She gets 26th place, which suggests she can do decent damage over a long period of time. Next is the splash test. Lily's able to hit all the boxes in the first three rows with her attack, and it only takes a few shots to break them open. Once she's collected the, enough power cubes, she uses her super to teleport to the rest of the boxes and deal some damage to them and then use one more attack to break them all open. She completes the splash test in 7.3 seconds and ties with Angelo for 23rd place. Next, we have the reload test, and like I mentioned, Lily's single ammo attack allows her to have a really fast reload speed without being totally broken. She's able to unload and reload 10 attacks in just 11.2 seconds. That puts her in 10th place. Next is the box test. Lily's attack is able to hit all of the boxes in each group in this test, which suggests that she'll be good at racking up the power cubes at the start of showdown matches. She completes the box test in 26.3 seconds, which puts her in ninth place. But her best test is the race test. Now, Lily already has a very fast movement speed, and her second star power makes her even faster for a few moments throughout this test. Once she gets close enough to the first swarm, she uses her super to teleport, which actually saves her a few seconds. She finishes this test in 7.7 .7 seconds and ties with Buzz for seventh place. So now that we know how Lily compares to each other brawler in the game stat-wise, the question is, how good is she actually going to be in the game modes? First up, we have Gem Grab, and I'm gonna go with S tier here. I think that Gem Grab will be her best game mode because of how good she's gonna be at assassinating enemy gem carriers. We've seen how fast she can charge her super, so I could see it being a pretty common thing for for her to kill a gem carrier, take all the gems, and then use her super to teleport somewhere else. Perhaps even more effective than her super for this is actually her gadget that puts her into the shadow realm. She basically becomes invisible and invincible for three seconds, which honestly seems very strong just for a gadget. Considering her ability to just take people out when they're least expecting it, I think that S tier is, I think that's pretty reasonable. As for Brawl Ball, I'm gonna go with A tier. And I think this comes down to Lily's stats. And honestly, I think that she could be a little bit better if it were just 
if she just had a little bit better stats, right? Not needing an ammo to shoot the ball is always really nice, but charging her super might be difficult to do, and she kind of lives and dies because of it, right? That being said, I could see some very cheesy plays where she goes into the Shadow Realm with her gadget, and teammates were gonna know where she's going to be, but the enemies won't. So they could very easily like kick the ball right as she pops out and then she could kick it into the goal. I think A tier is justified. I could see some people arguing for B tier, but yeah, we'll have to see. As for Heist, I'm going with F tier. This could literally be her worst game mode. Her main attack can deal some pretty consistent damage over a long period of time, but she is gonna struggle to get right next to a safe in order to do that. And even if she's able to get to an enemy safe, which I think she'll be able to do with her Shadow Realm gadget pretty easily, she's not gonna last there for very long, right? And if it is a base race, there are a lot of other brawlers that, just way, that are way better at heist for it. Her super cannot target the safe, so she can really only use her attack damage to deal damage to the safe. She honestly seems like a slightly better Mortis to me in this mode, so F tier makes sense. Next we have Bounty, and I'm gonna go with B tier. Now, I honestly think that she could actually be pretty good in Bounty for the same reason she's, she's good in Gem Grab. She might struggle a little bit more than usual to charge her super on most Bounty maps, but all it takes is one or two good supers to assassinate an enemy with a high bounty to completely turn the game around. She can also jump into the Shadow Realm to safely get away out of any situation, which is very useful if she herself has a high bounty. Some people might argue A tier, but because of her stats, I'm going to go with B tier. Next, we have Hot Zone, and I'm going to go with C tier. Lily has almost zero area control, so she won't be the best at controlling the map and keeping enemies out of the zone, or staying inside the zone to score points while people are attacking her from a distance. Even being in the Shadow Realm won't be as quite as good in this mode, since you don't actually score any points while you're in the Shadow Realm. But with the right comp, even assassins do have their place on most hot zone maps. So I'm gonna give her C tier because I don't think she'll be totally useless, but I also don't think she's going to be competitive. As for knockout though, absolutely she's going to be really good. I'm gonna go with S tier. Knockout's another game mode where Lily is going to do really well in certain situations. It could require some good communication from teammates at the higher level of play because entering the Shadow Realm will be one of the best abilities here. But she actually doesn't know where the enemies are while she's in the Shadow Realm. So you have to like tell your teammate Lily where they are, but you know, she has three seconds to get there. Even if she can't use the Shadow Realm to assassinate brawlers though, she can at least use it to position herself to where she can start charging her super with her trait and then once that's charged she's going to be very viable as an assassin to just take people out so s tier makes sense solo showdown i'm going with a tier here as well solo showdown should be a very good game mode for lily because her shadow realm gadget will likely keep her completely safe from being ambushed and it can be used offensively. Since nobody has teammates, at least they shouldn't, I think that she will win most of her 1v1 interactions. And once she takes one enemy out, it's a very good chance that she's going to have another supercharge or very close to charging it, which she can just charge by getting close to an enemy on the other side of a wall or something like that. She's also really good at opening up boxes and ramping up in damage in Showdown. I think that Solo Showdown is a great game mode for her. As for Duo Showdown, I don't think she's gonna be quite as good. I'm gonna put her in the B tier. Lily's gonna do significantly worse in duo showdown than solo because every enemy that she hits with her super will probably have a teammate to instantly back them up and defeat her before she can get them. Going into the shadow realm might be useful to buy some extra time if she's waiting for her team teammates to respawn, but using it while her teammate is alive will leave them completely alone, which isn't super great. Still, I think she's good enough at assassinating people that B tier does make sense. Overall, I honestly don't think that Lily has that much damage, burst damage compared to other assassins that play similar to her, which is crucial for assassins, but she can do tons of damage. She can just take out super squishy brawlers and she has a decent amount of HP. So she, I think she's gonna be at least decent at, on release. She's not gonna be broken, which is really nice, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Once again, no voice lines for her, but here you can take a look at her pin animations.